Hello and welcome to another tutorial from www.universe-3d.com um, Today we will show you how to make a mountain panorama and let's just start with the basic let's just create a flat plane for the mountain structure let's divide them with by pressing the um, arrow keys and let's put segments X on 7 and the Z on 7 2 okay now hit the tab button to make it uh, a meter nerb and that's all we need for the modeling you can save by hitting S we're gonna save this as Alps Mountain that. okay now it's saved Okay, now in Layouter we're gonna show you how to make the mountain shapes. That's pretty much easy. You just go, you hit the P key, you just hit the P key and you go to Geometry. This set to 3 at the beginning. So you go to Displacement Map and you add here first the procedural texture and not turbulence you go to crumble the crumble texture is one of the most used textures in lightwave probably to make some sharp edges this is why we want the crumble because we need sharp edges okay as you can see in the background already the flat surface changed into a bumpy something and if you rotate it you can see some little hills but it doesn't look quite good because we have two less subdivisions so this is where this panel comes very handy geometry you go to the display sub patch level 25 and light wave will add a lot of polygons you have now a polygon count of 61,250 which means we had in the beginning around 840 and 84 uh, let's check this again no 80, 882 and afterwards we have 61,000 polygons so that's why it can look so good and it will not enhance the render times so back to the displacement you also see that there are too many bumps this is way too much and we can't handle that so what we do is we just lower that a bit and we put the frequencies down like to 2 this is where the shape of the mountain they, it, it really appears yeah so now you can see the sharp edges already it looks more like a sand mountains made out of sand that's why we need another displacement texture and the so we okay I put this a bit more here so we hit the add layer procedural and we go to the Ridged multifractal. Wow, though this gives it speeds up everything pretty much. So let's go and lower that a bit. Okay, now we put that down to around. Okay, yeah, like that. So all the 
other stuff you can leave as it is. The only thing what we do is we put here additive, which means the additive will be added to the crumble texture. So they melt together, they get blended, as it says, blending mode. And what we have is a really nice shape of mountains. Uh, looks already awesome. Okay, now in crumble we leave everything like it is. It's just the way we want it. So that was the displacement chapter. Let's go ahead and let's define the texture for our nice Alps here. Okay, we go to Surface Editor. Oh, and, and you can see in the background um, the predefined settings here, but we're going to remove that. I will show you this later. Okay. Now we need the settings for our um, color. First I want to introduce you the gradient slope texture. The slope can, with slope you can define the color of the object. Like I want the color on top to be white. Then at this position I want the color to be grayish. You see, now it gets from white to grayish. And we put another one, which is even a darker gray. Yeah, can you see? It's getting here the differences and then we make it white again. So now you have some different colors on the object. So the next layer will be the turbulence layer. We add another layer, a procedure, a turbulence, exactly. And we have the turbulence. We use the turbulence as the snow layer. So we put on contrast like up to 24, 24.5 and first I need to check because I can't see the textures right here if the texture is enabled. We do this by clicking the D button and I have and we have to activate the show text editor layer. But this is for text editor now. So okay we have everything on. Okay. Should be good. So and this should be an additive, you see? as soon as you put additive it gets added to the color the basic color and you can see the various shadings here already and we should make them smaller yeah so we we have a, a decent um, variety of colors and I want the frequencies to be higher so it shows more the color of the white so it, it seems more like uh, um, spread it on top. Okay, we add another layer because this is not enough. Another layer called the hetero terrain. The hetero terrain, this is what gives a real nice um, effect to our mountain surface. We raise that a bit, we invert it so we get the opposite 
you see what is white will get dark and we will put here a white as well and we go the increment we put this up to around 84 this is because of the um, all those of the snow effect it's some slight varieties of the snow and we also hit the additive button for that okay now we have all those three this is enough for the moment as you can see you have the varieties here and you already see the varieties here in the OpenGL okay next we go to specularity for specularity we actually use the same as for the other like we use the turbulence we copy our turbulence here copy selected layer because snow is reflective and has a specular so we put here specular oh, sorry paste replace all layers okay add two layers we just replace the selected layer and we put this up to yeah let's say 85 that's a nice it's a nice one uh, 60 or 86 it's okay so the rest is all stays the same and then the next one is we raise the glossiness around at 54 and the next thing is we do the bump map because there are some bumps and the snow and all the stuff shows so let's hit the snow one which is also the turbulence so that's why we make here another turbulence with a texture value of the first one of 80 80 should be okay yeah and you see here it gets now in the shape of the white snow or the more or less white snow but we go down to 9 here because we don't need so many I want it to be more rough and the contrast we put the contrast down to 0 we don't need a contrast here and there's more power we can just leave it 0 0.5 the only thing what I do is now that I make here 900 and 900 and 0 0.9 so it gets slightly stretched and you can see this later when we um, when we render the result and we add another procedural texture with let's say 78 this is just to bring some variety into the snow and the so it doesn't look too boring that's why we put those and we put it on let's say 90 the opacity to 90 the contrast a bit up this you can actually do as you wish because there's no no plan behind it it's just to give some variety and you will see it looks great so we just do here uh, one so it's small it adds small irregularities onto the surface let's just add another one and let's see what we can do here we make an additive oh now you see that looks 
very good like like a rock and we can leave it as it is for now maybe the frequency so it gets more defined and the rest maybe here uh, 4 0 0.4 then 0.8 okay let's do it this also 800 I think that's enough for now and so we are pretty much done with the surface Now let's go to the clouds. Let's take first we open the backdrop options and add the texture environment under backdrop. Then double click on the properties or right mouse button and properties. You go to to the Y axis because we want to apply the texture on from top to down. Press the texture and add a procedural texture. We need anyways we need two so we can just go here and put in procedural texture. This is just um, as you want if you add layer then you just have the uh, layer from before so this is no big deal. And first and then we need another a gradient which will be our backdrop color so and we need here the pitch pitch means that all the colors you put in here for example uh, let's select here a light blue cause of the bluish from the sky then we add here the orange cause we have the orange from the sun because we will add a sunset you can see here and just click into the color gradient and you will add another um, slide slider here well, we could use a bit darker orange yeah, this would be okay. Maybe a bit more to the red. Okay, L something like that. That looks pretty good. And yeah, that's okay. So just to um, to see how it will look in the final render, just hit the F7 button, which is the Viper. and uh, F7 for the wiper. Okay. So this is what we have right now. Just a nice gradient the way we have it on our gradient pitch here. This is you can uh, imagine this is the viewable uh, area. Yeah. You see this is like exactly those two parameters here. Okay, now next we go to the turbulence and under turbulence we add this we activate the turbulence layer and immediately you see here the, the clouds overlaying. Okay, first we start with the f uh, frequencies let's say 12 would be enough, would be okay the frequencies indicates the um, uh, fineness of the clouds of the texture and we want texture to be very sharp yeah now it gets the cloudy um, touch let's go back let's say to 70 71 
Okay. And we want we don't want the clouds to be like that high, so we just shrink them when by putting in the perimeter here the y axis at 200 millimeters and now immediately you see how powerful light waves procedural textures are now you have the you have here some really nice cloud showing up and that's just amazing okay uh, next what we need is we need because the sun has this orange light we don't want white clouds they also need to be at this color yeah and let's just go to the texture layer number two which is almost the same as this one we let's just remove this layer and let's copy this one and add two layers okay now we have exactly the same layer here but now we want this one to be even darker orange let's say like that okay now that looks awful right now and that's why we throttle it down to let's say 60 percent and we hit the additive whoa now look at that so the additive gives that it adds the two colors together like this color and that color and calculates uh, color in between it's like the additive mode in um, Photoshop or any other graphic application and maybe that's a bit too bright so let's just go down a bit with the layer opacity and now okay now that looks good now this one can be also a bit down okay I would say that looks good for the beginning although there's a small power what you can do here is what we need is I, I want the the highlighted areas of the clouds to be smaller than the original cloud this is just because of um, the variety again now you see it just it looks more like um, like clouds that's all and let's put here 200 yeah okay now this is more like you see the blue sky and the clouds and some white clouds and this is just that's why I love light wave so much because you have so many parameters to set and it just looks great in a few seconds it's amazing so now when now we have the background we can close Viper again and that was one short introduction into the power of textured environment so you can play around with it and find the best settings for you this was just a short pickup and let's go ahead to the next chapter lighting okay let's go ahead with chapter 5 camera and light and now we need a position for the camera well this s won't be too hard let's just find a nice yeah well here we are that looks pretty neat pretty good and what you can do is if you don't like those sharp edges here yeah just go into your object properties by clicking the mouse wheel and pressing P and at geometry put here 30 for example that will rise the polygon count but it will also look very very neat you see got got all smoother and that's what we wanted well maybe we can turn around the object a bit yeah I mean it looks pretty sweet 
from now on already and the light let's put the light over here it gives the viewer a better feeling but one thing what we need to do is we need the color let's um, click the number five okay now you see that the light isn't set too well okay I use a spotlight because the distant light gives too hard um, shadows and I don't want a hard shadow so what I do is we go shadow shadow map and the, sh the shadow map size I put up to 8000 and the shadow fuzziness up to 9 or 10 let's put 10 in here so that, that means that the the shadows will be very soft and it looks almost like an area light just almost not not really like an area light but you can make things good with it and let's put a lens flare and we don't want the central ring that's already right here and 90 set to 90 that's all okay already behind fade behind objects we want that that if if it goes behind a mountain that it doesn't show through okay rest as it is global illumination ambient intensity I set to 10 shading noise reduction is on and that's all no radiosity needed nothing okay let's go back to to the camera perspective by clicking the 6 key okay now okay now the you see the ca uh, the light is too far it got out of the okay now this is okay oh we forgot the color sorry about that let's put the color to a light orange touch okay yeah so actually that's pretty much all we need all what we need now is to render hit the F9 and let's see the result okay we have I have two light sources here the fill light let's see what the fill light is okay the fill light is to um, yeah to light the back of the mountain because of the snow and all the stuff it gets uh, reflected the sunlight gets reflected and brightens up the back of the that's why it see you see what you see here is all the um, the backlight okay now let's see um, what we need to do if you hit the render uh, the F9 key then you see that there is some stuff not like we wanted for example it's too bright and we need to lower the the, the fill light what I have called fill light and we don't want shadows from the fill light so the front light has shadow maps okay that's okay then the next tweak we have to do is we can do a slight translucency just a slight five percent it brightens up everything a bit and let's put the diffuse down a bit to 70 and that should do the trick and what I saw there is the turbulence there is the turbulence which is quite big it's this one we should make this smaller we should bring it down to let's say 6 and 2 1 this should be okay and 
well you can add another layer for example let's another procedural layer not the turbulence let's make the dented which just adds some um, some like rocks type of texture and I make it also a bit small okay I will also put that in edit additive mode so it will be added to all the layers and but the 80 is too strong also the turbulence here with 80 is t way too strong let's lower it a bit okay and now you can hit the F9 key to render again it's under render and render frame now you can render should take around 70 seconds so that's my result for now you can you see the clouds in the background they're pretty flat maybe we can add some depth into that and m maybe we should we should definitely add some um, some fog so I just shut this down we go to fog under backdrop options volumetrics nonlinear fog now we put this over here and we let it go well I need to find out this is from dragging around the display error and what is essential we need the use backdrop color which is very very important because with the backdrop color what we do here now is that what you see is in the fog now yeah uh, you will see the background shine through which means you have the clouds going through the mountains which gives a really nice feeling yeah uh, so that's all what we need to do let's just hit again the render this is what we get you see here it seems like the clouds are in the mountains yeah this is because the background is showing through where we told the fog to be and well we have nice textures here okay here that's the this is from the turbulence which is not so good let's see if we can fix that that's just the tweaking stuff and we should definitely make the picture the all-in-all -all picture a bit darker so we get the sense of uh, um, how is um, of a sunset so let's go to the light panel again light properties is already on and we go to the illumination we put this a bit down to 74 and the fill light goes back and the global illumination we go to five this should be enough and let's go to the surface editor again to the bump the turbulence this is the turbulence where's the yeah this turbulence here should be smaller let's put it to six two one and that should make 
it look nice. This is my final rendering after some tweakings on the sky and the surface and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and hope to see you again on www.universe-3d.com